Hey, welcome back to Antisocial Studies. Uh, today we're going to do a deep dive into the Sultanate of Malacca. So we're still in Unit 2. Um, this is a part of the Indian Ocean Exchange. Um, I wanted to do a separate video on Malacca um, to kind of add to the, the deep dive I did for Unit 1 all about these different South and Southeast Asian trading states. The reason why I wanted to do Malacca separately is because it kind of comes towards the end of a lot of those states and towards the end of this time period of 1200 to 1450. Also, I think that this is a really great illustrative example to know. It's really strategic to know a little bit about Malacca because it's one of those states that lasts for multiple time periods throughout WAP. So as you're learning throughout the year, you're going to start to notice that there are going to be certain terms, certain people, well, not people, they die, but certain civilizations or states that last for a really long time. Those are ones you really want to know about because you get more bang for your buck, if you think of it that way. For example, later on, I'm going to talk to you about the Ottoman Empire because the Ottoman Empire lasts from you know the 1400s really all the way up until World War One, so it's something that you can use if you know a little bit about that state. You can pull it in as an example for a lot of different topics and time periods. Anyway, today we're going to talk about Malacca for that reason. So um, Malacca, I mentioned in my deep dive in Unit One about Southeast Asian states. I mentioned that it was founded by. Um, there's sort of some myths around how it's founded. It was a king from Singapore, which is where today Singapore is. This was part of that Srivijaya empire. He was driven out by their rival, the Majapahit, um, and he ended up in this tiny little fishing village, which is today Malacca, right on the Straits of Malacca. Um, and he essentially developed an alliance with different um, Malay sea nomads to control the Strait of Malacca and thus control trade. So this is going to be important for in a slide or two. Um, these sea, sea nomads are different like ethnic groups that still exist in the Southeast Asian, Southeast Asian world. They um, are essentially going to serve the same purpose for Indian Ocean trade that like the Berbers or other nomadic groups in um, the Sahara or in the Silk Road region serve for those trade routes. They help expand it. They make connections between different states that are sedentary. Um, they just do it on the water, which is pretty cool. And so um, he develops this alliance with these sea nomads where essentially they can kind of funnel ships to where they have to go through the Straits of the Strait of Malacca if they want to get out and around and over to China. And then he can charge taxes and gain money and become more powerful. Um, Malacca reaches its height in the 1400s. Again, as these other Southeast Asian kingdoms are struggling, Srivijaya has fallen, the Majapahit, um, Malacca is rising. And really the only reason it rises is because China chooses it. China selects Malacca as sort of its guy in Southeast Asia um, to support. Um, the Ming dynasty send out Zheng He, the explorer, and one of the purposes of one of his voyages is to go visit Malacca and set them up as their own country. They had been just sort of known as kind of a, a village that taxed ships. Now they're going to have the support of the Ming dynasty. This is actually a map from Zheng He's voyages identifying the thing in the red circle is where Malacca was. So the, the Yongle emperor is telling Zheng He, like, go there, make friends with them, let them know that like if they pay tribute to us, we're going to make sure that they're a powerful uh, state in the Southeast Asian region. Um, to the extent that even the, em the Ming emperor's daughter married the Sultan of Malacca, so they developed this very close relationship. It's really the only reason that Malacca is going to become powerful and influential, because at that point then they are no longer threatened by any other states. They had been threatened by Siam, which is one of those Thai states. They had been threatened by the Majapahit. Um, but after they get the stamp of approval from China, no one really wants to touch them. Until Europeans, right? So again, this the height is in the 1400s. That's in Unit 2, that 1200 1450 time period. For this one, I want to go a little further to talk about what's going to happen to them, because again, this Sultanate of Malacca is something that lasts for a long period of time. And so um, it's going to sort of lead us into the themes and developments that we're going to be talking about in Unit 3 and 4. So they are eventually going to get conquered by different European groups, uh, um, initially the Portuguese in 1511. So we're going to talk about in the next time period how the Portuguese are really the first to get out there exploring. They're the first to kind of reach the Indian Ocean and gain influence. They conquer the city of the city state of Malacca. Ironically, then, by conquering Malacca and taking them over, they destroy 
the whole power structure that the state of Malacca had built up to be powerful and influential. So because, and this is something Europeans are going to do all over the place, um, and it's no different in Southeast Asia, because the Sultan of Malacca, going all the way back to its founder, had developed these very sort of important and fragile and shifting relationships with these different sea nomadic groups, um, they didn't have like direct power over the whole region. They sort of had this network of like-minded people. When the Europeans come in and take those people, that leadership away, a lot of these other ethnic groups and sea nomads and different states that had this sort of tense alliance are like, well, we don't want to do business with you. We don't know you. You're Christian. You're white. You've just come in and conquered the place. And so it actually totally disrupts what had been a really lucrative um, sort of trading spot along the Strait of Malacca to where then it's actually not really that valuable anymore, ironically. It's later going to be conquered by the Dutch and then eventually ceded to the British. Um, one thing, and again, this this is something I'll kind of refer back to later on, but um, talking about Malacca as an example of like early conquest in the same way that we talk about like the British Empire and the North American colonies, or we're going to talk about Spain and Latin America, you can talk about Malacca with being conquered by the Portuguese and the Dutch. When the Portuguese come in and conquer Malacca, they... Um, they give amnesty to the Hindu, Chinese, Burmese inhabitants. Remember that Southeast Asia is incredibly diverse. It's been this go-to spot for merchants and travelers for centuries now. And so there's a lot of um, ethnic and religious diversity there. However, um, the Portuguese persecute the Muslim inhabitants. They either kill them or they sell them into slavery. Uh, and so this is another sad example of what we're gonna talk about when we get to units three and four, which is sort of the price of conquest and, and the way that European rising sea powers treat non-European states and people. Um, eventually in the 1800s, again, they're gonna go all the way into our third time period. They get ceded to the British East India Company. So again, when we get to unit five and six, we're gonna talk about how the British you know, use this sort of almost corporate colonialism. They send the British East India Company and they sort of gain influence in places first. They do this most famously in modern day India. They do the same thing in Malaysia, um, almost exactly the same as what's gonna happen in India. There's a, re a rebellion amongst the people of Malacca and the people of really kind of the these islands in general, um, and they rebel against the British East India Company, just like we're going to see with the Sepoy Rebellion in India. Um, and then that's what convinces the British to say, OK, we can't just let the company sort of control the island. We need to go in and actually make it an official colony, which they do. Um, so the British come to control directly Malacca in 1824. For really by that point it's the 1830s. Um, and it's going to stay a British colony until the end of World War II. They get briefly conquered by Japan. And then when Japan falls at the end of World War II, um, Malacca gets its independence in 1946, along with a lot of other former colonies. Um, now that when Britain, you know, wins World War II, but they're at that point so weak that they really kind of grant independence to a lot of places that they can't afford to keep up with anymore. So hopefully you can see why I wanted to talk about Malacca today. It's a really great example of a place you can keep referring back to really from the 1400s all the way up to the 20th century um, because it's constantly this pawn in kind of these bigger developments. So right now in unit two, 1200 to 1450, it's sort of a pawn of the Chinese trading state um, where they kind of establish them as their friendly power, which helps them kind of vanquish the enemies and rivals of the Majapahit, the Thai states, these other places that I talked about in the other deep dive video. And they're going to constantly be kind of traded around as a pawn because they exist on this geographically really important strait of Malacca. Okay, I uh, hope that was helpful. Maybe refer back to this later too when you're coming into unit four, unit six, um, even the 20th century. Um, because again, this is one of those illustrative examples that when you get to the AP test, um, there's a lot of different time periods and a lot of different developments where you can talk about the Sultanate of Malacca and basically how it was used by various powers to try to gain control. So hope that was helpful. Uh, for more resources, check out my website. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at Antisocial Studies and make sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel so that you can see when the next video comes out. Thanks.